Hey Dragon Slayers, today's video is about intensity of exercise and its importance to reversing insulin resistance. Other than simply exercising regularly, the next most important variable in regards to exercise and insulin resistance is intensity. People are often quite casual about their exercise, whether it's aerobic or resistance. Many of us tend to just go through the motions. Exercise should be a fairly strenuous ordeal. The effort and focus you devote to it might be unpleasant for some of us, but know that the payoff is great. Individuals who are able to exercise more vigorously have greater improvements in insulin sensitivity and many other benefits. However, if such intensity is too daunting to consider, remember that simply doing it at any intensity is the best place to begin. If your reason for exercising is to improve your metabolic health by improving insulin sensitivity, put down the post-workout sports drinks. It's making things worse. Exercise is a good way to improve insulin sensitivity. However, by adding a glucose load after your workout, which many believe is essential, you lose some of the insulin sensitizing improvements of the exercise. The best bet is to avoid sugary drinks and foods for as long after the workout as you're comfortable. In the case of aerobic exercise, a case can be made for lower intensity workouts especially if you're in the early stages of changing your diet. If you've started eating more fat and fewer carbs, going easy on the exercise gives your body time to adapt to this alternative fuel source. With lower intensity exercise, the body does use relatively more fat as fuel. Importantly, as an individual becomes increasingly more trained, the body is able to predominantly use fat rather than glucose at higher and higher intensities. As you become adapted to using fat to fuel your exercise, increasing intensity may mean a faster walk than normal, a brisk walk with intermittent sprints, a vigorous jog, or a jog with periodic sprints. The same general principle applies to any other aerobic exercise, such as cycling or swimming. In fact, for those pressed for time, simply increasing the intensity over a shorter time, such as 20 minutes, is at least as effective as improving insulin resistance as lower intensities for longer duration exercises. The style of exercise, uh, termed high intensity interval training, also known as HIT for short, is effective enough that its popularity has exploded. Chances are you or someone you know is already doing it. For resistance exercise, a higher intensity workout means approaching or going to failure on each set whether by increasing weight or doing more repetitions. This style of exercise not only requires some time to adjust to the more demanding routine, but it also requires greater determination. Continuing with an exercise until you can't do another rep is as exhausting mentally as it is physically. Again, this isn't something that a person just starts out randomly doing one day. To avoid injury, this should be a gradual process of getting to the point where failure happens anywhere between around 5 to 15 repetitions. But the number of times you perform the exercise is less important than going to failure. You might conclude the mantra is go often and go hard. A better takeaway from this would be to just do it. <laughs> Think about the Nike swoosh. Start where you are by doing what you can, when you can. If you're honest with yourself or you trust someone to be honest with you, 
you'll make sure you're regularly increasing either the frequency or intensity to help maximize the insulin sensitizing effects of your efforts. Read whatever you decide and as an effective exercise can be as, as exercise can be at fighting insulin resistance, it's best matched with changes in what and when we eat, which we'll cover in the next video. That's what I've got for you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. And remember guys, that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.